Okay, here we go. So we're on now in chapter two. And all of unit two is working with fractions. So um, we're going to start with the basics that we need with fractions now that you guys have been doing uh, greatest common factor. This is going to make more sense to you, hopefully. So our essential questions today are how are equivalent fractions helpful in solving problems? And how do I know if a fraction has been simplified completely? Okay. I've already kind of talked about both of those in class, but um, we'll see where we get with this. All right, so let's do some vocab first. So my numerator, let's start with numerator. And my numerator is the number on top of a fraction. And this is the part of the fraction. You have a part and a whole. So the numerator is the part. The denominator is the number on the bottom. of a fraction. So this is the whole. A fraction just shows a part of a whole, right? So think about that. If you have three-fourths of a dollar, you don't have a whole dollar. You have a part of a dollar, right? So equivalent. Equivalent is two or more. It can be more than that. Two or more numbers or fractions that have equal value. They may not be exactly the same numbers, but their value is the same. Like two coin money is the easiest thing to think of. If I have 10 cents, it's the same thing as one dime or 10 pennies still equals the same thing, but they're in different forms, right? Okay, improper fraction happens when you have a larger um, number in the numerator, so on top, than on the bottom. Then, sorry, let me, let me word that a little better. Then, in the denominator, which is in the bottom, okay? <clears throat> Reduced just means simplified. That's another word for it, simplified. As far as it can get. Okay. And then a common denominator, which we've talked about quite a bit. It's just the same. Now for fractions, it's the same number in the bottom of a fraction. Okay, so take a minute, get all your vocabulary written down. Okay, and then we're going to come over and show you what some of this means. So let's move over here. Okay. So equivalent fractions are fractions that appear uh, that appear different but have the same value. Okay, so let's go back to what we were talking about. If I have half of a dollar, I can represent that as, right? Well, if I have half a dollar, I know that's 50 cents. But now let's talk about fractions. So that means I have 50 cents out of 100. So I can have 50 pennies, right? Or I can have a 50 cent piece. I could have one of those, which would be 25 cents. 
or I can have five dimes, right? These are all different options that I can have. Those are all the equivalent fractions, okay? And I'm gonna show you a way that you can tell that they're equivalent, and it's gonna help you with some of your con skills. Okay. So let's just take these two on the end. So that's, that's a 200 right there, okay? So 100 out of 200 is the same thing as four over eight. And the easiest way that you can check that is to cross multiply those. And what we say is cross products have to be equal. So if I multiply eight times 100, I get 800. And if I multiply four times 200, I get 800. And as long as my cross products are equal, I know that my fractions are equivalent. That's a big thing. And we're gonna talk about that quite a bit in class and you'll do a lot of practice with that, okay? All right, so to make a larger equivalent fraction, you're simply going to multiply, multiply, by a fraction equal to one, meaning you have the same number over itself. Okay, so let's do an example of that. Let's say I start with two over three, and you can pick any number to make an equivalent fraction. So I'm gonna choose four. So I'm gonna multiply by four on the top and the bottom. And when I say that you have a fraction that equals one, well, four divided by four equals one. So I'm not changing the value of anything, I'm just changing the look of it, essentially. Okay, so two times four, is eight and three times four is 12. So that's an equivalent fraction to two over three. Um, and if we wanted to check that, how could we check that? If we say that two thirds equals eight twelfths, now you know you can multiply on the diagonals and they should have equal amounts, equal values, right? So. 2 times 12 is 24, and 3 times 8 is 24. If those values are equal, you know you did that correctly. Okay. Let's do one more. So we have um, 7, and it can be an improper fraction too, 7 over 5. And I'm going to multiply each of these by 8, and I get 56 over 40 and that's an equivalent fraction to seven over five, okay? So by the opposite token, to make a smaller equivalent fraction, you're going to divide, oops, let's put that in black, divide, right? And that's what we've been doing when we've been finding our common denominators, right? We've been dividing by different numbers until we get all the way down to the end. So if you are simplifying a fraction, you are finding the smallest equivalent fractions possible. So one we did quite a bit with our finding greatest common factors was 42 over 48. And you can look at your uh, multiplication sheet and know that those can both be divided by six so that would equal seven over eight. There's no other number I can put into seven and eight besides one, so this is a completely simplified fraction, okay? If you have 10 over 35, since they end in zero and five, I know I can divide those both, divide those both by five, and I get two over seven, which is completely simplified. Now, one thing we talked about in finding greatest common factors was if you can't do it in one step, it's okay. It's not a big deal. So let's do this. 64 over 80. Well, let's say I don't know what number goes into those except for two because they're both even numbers, so I know I can divide them by two. So let's start with that. And half of 64 is 32, and half of 80 is 40. But I can keep going. And now I recognize, oh, wait a minute, I think that four goes into both of those. So I can divide those both by four, okay? And I get 
32 divided by 4 is 8. 40 divided by 4, divided by 4 is 10. Oh, well, I can go one more time, can't I? So I know I can cut those each in half. And so I will get 4 over 5. Now that is completely simplified. So instead of it being nice and easy and only taking one step to get there, like we did up here, that's okay. I just had to take out numbers three times. So 2 times 4 times 2 is 16. Had I known that 16 went into 64 and 80, I could have done it in one step, but I didn't know, and it's perfectly okay. We got to where we needed to be. Okay, all right, that's it.